Hello, everyone, and welcome. Today, I decided I would talk about how to write a teenage superhero, a guide. Yes, that's what we're talking about today. Moving on. Why am I doing this? Hmm. A meme, to be quite honest. It is hilarious, in my opinion. I'm basically right. All teenage heroes are exactly the same. Get over it. And I had inspiration. Basically, that is all. Moving on. Teen superheroes. Some examples. Throughout various Marvel, DC, other genres, we have various teen superheroes, as you all know. There's Spider-Man, there's Ms. Marvel, there's the Teen Titans, basically every single iteration of Robin, um, Static Shock. Every X-Men, more or less, begins out as an, uh, a teenage superhero. You got uh, Invincible, Ben 10, and then Shazam. They're all teenagers at, at some point, or they're kids. Kids can be also applicable for this. <clears throat> but moving on to that, we have their backstories. Now, if you're going to write a child, uh, a teenage superhero, you have to have their backstory be sad or depressing, even if it's just a little bit. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, they have to have been orphaned. They have to have a missing parent or a guardian. Or if none of those are applicable, they have to be bullied. They have to be looked down on by their peers, you know. So if, if, uh, if they attend school, they have to be, you know, unpopular. They have to be uh, bullied, shoved into lockers, made fun of, that kind of stuff. If they do have parents, they're kind of like unsupportive parents. Um, or if they're orphaned, you know, they're going to be orphans, of course. Or, you know, at least missing one parent, or perhaps they're being... Uh, looked after after a certain guardian so they don't have their original biological parents there. There's some sort of, you know, not normal elements there, right? Also, they're going to be nerdy or smart, for the most part. And uh, there are some exceptions to this, but they're going to like comics or superheroes. They're going to be fans of that kind of stuff. They're going to be gamers, or they're going to be like uh, really techy and geeky and stuff like that. Like they program or... Uh, they know, like, engineering, stuff like that. Basically, they're going to be unpopular by standards of this world. Right? Um, at least in standards of the comic book world, because now it's been more socially acceptable to do these kind of things, to like comics and superheroes and games and all that. But back when comics were really taking form, they weren't so much. And so that's where uh, that comes into play. And they'll usually have some sort of romantic interest that is out of their league, or at least that they think they're out of their league. Now that we have the backstory for them all formulated, let's move on to how they got their powers. There's basically two main ways that a kid is going to get their powers suddenly. It's going to be luck. Right place, right time. Think of like... Spider-Man getting bit by the spider at that particular moment in time to get his powers. Uh, they find a mysterious object. Think of like uh, in, the, in the most recent series of Miss Marvel, TV1, uh, where she finds a mysterious like bracelet that gives her the powers. Um, raised by another hero, such as uh, all the Robins being taken over by Batman, or Speedy from uh, Green Arrow, right? Uh, or they're exposed to something, whether it's some sort of cosmic rays or like radiation or that kind of stuff. Uh, that's the first thing with luck. And then they have, they're born with it, but their parents keep it a secret, right? So the reasons for the parents keeping it a secret is because, oh, well, your powers might not have developed, and so we didn't want to give you false hope, or we wanted you to have a, a safe and a normal life. Or you weren't ready for the responsibility that the powers would give you, or you couldn't handle the powers. Anything that's kind of like really condescending, kind of stuff like that, that would have like, you know, definitely changed this like sad, lonely, depressed kid's life if they knew about it, right? Like very rarely out of these two categories are you going to have a teenage hero who just is born with their powers, knows exactly 
how to use their powers, and that's that. Now, outside of this, you could think of people like Starfire, for example, but she doesn't really count because she's an alien, and all of her powers are technically what she would have normally, right? So she is a normal person by the standards of her society, right? Same with, like, Raven, having her powers uh, and being born with it and whatnot there. But also, she falls into other categories of having, you know, the, the sad childhood, the uh, stuff with her dad, she's not into her dad and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, <clears throat> most heroes fall into this category. Now, how do they use their powers? Well, since they are newly acquired, at first, of course, they're going to be using their powers poorly. They're going to be testing things out, hurting themselves or others, all that kind of stuff. Basically learning one step at a time. Often leading to hilarity or stuff like that. But somehow, they manage to get the hang of their powers really quick. And the reason for this is because they'll say things like, it just felt right to do this. Or, you know, just doing this, it just, it just felt like I should do this to, you know, use my powers properly. Or they're a genius or a prodigy. Or they just happen to have the necessary skills. Think of, like, uh, the spider man who can't uh, produce webs inside their body, but who, like, made the material for it. They just happen to have the knowledge to make these, like, synthetic webs, right? And to make uh, the ones who make their own suits. They just so happen to have the... Uh, knowledge to make all these like super suits that protect them and stuff, right? They just happen to have all that stuff, right? Now, <clears throat> another thing about how to use their powers, once they have their powers and, you know, they're, they're pretty much good to go on that aspect and they're trained and all that, they somehow manage to defeat adult villains. Adult villains with powers and many years of experience over them? Nah, get out of here. You got a teenage kid here who just learned about his powers who's going to take your ass down. Also, when defeating those villains, the child is going to adapt to violence really quickly. Um, they're going to be stunned at first that they're, you know, fighting someone and that they're, you know, being injured or hurt. But they're going to very quickly be like, okay, I'm going to kick your ass now. Um, essentially something like that. They're going to be real quick and prone to conduct violence with their powers. It's not going to be like uh, they're sitting there for five episodes being like, oh, should I, should I use my powers for good or should I, you know, hide them and all that kind of stuff. They're going to be using it, obviously, right away to kick some villain butt. That's just how it works. Next, villain interactions. This is how the uh, teenage heroes will interact with villains. First of all, they're going to be naive and try to fix the villain. You got a mass murderer? Uh, they can be fixed. They can repent for their crimes and live a normal life, right? Every single person can be saved, whether they're an innocent or a, a villain. That is the motto of the teenage superhero, right? And there are some exceptions to this, of course, but for the most part, uh, and this can be said of many heroes as well that aren't just teenage heroes, they'll always try to save everyone, even if they're a villain, right? Now, there are exceptions where Deadpool just kills everyone, for example. He doesn't try to save anyone, really. Um, and then, heroes will win at first, of course. Uh, but they'll spare the hero. And it'll be something like, oh, the, the, the villain just, like, massacred all these orphans and burned down this orphanage, and they, you know, beat up the hero. But they're going to spare the hero because he's a kid. They're going to say, get out of here, I don't kill kids. Something like that, after they put the beat down on the kid the first time, right? Because it's never just the kid encounters a villain and then takes them down right away. They have to learn, right? So in order to build your hero, you have to have them first encounter a villain who beats them up and spares their life, right? Because of course they're a villain, but they're not, they're not a murderer, right? I mean, sure, they just destroyed a hospital, but they're not going to murder a kid, right? So because they get spared... They get to learn from that and then come back and kick the villain's butt. And so they always let the hero live, even if the villain has time to kill or cripple this hero. Even knowing that this hero is going to go on and continue to become a thorn in their side, they're going to let them live, always, without a doubt. The villain might say something like, 
I'm going to kill you, Spider-Man, or something like that, right? But they never actually do it, and they never actually, like, commit to it. Like, they'll leave them half dead, like, on the side of a building or something like that. But they don't deliver that final blow, right? Also, the villains always look down on them. They'll say things like, ha, you're just a kid? Or, come back in a few years. Or they'll say stuff like, uh, you wouldn't understand why I'm doing this. The world for adults is different. You know, any of that stuff sound familiar, you know? When a villain is trying to justify why they're a villain to the kid, and the kid's like, you shouldn't commit crimes, and the villain's like, huh, you wouldn't understand. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's what happens. Moving on. The hidden identity will be kept a secret. Well, they're going to tell their friends, right? So, they're not going to tell anyone that they have powers or that they're a hero. Oh, but uh, you're, you're trying to have them have friends? Okay, spill the beans. Tell them. They know. They know. You can't tell any adults, though. Oh, there, there's an adult in the story who's another hero? Or that can mentor the teen hero? Okay, tell them to. Their personality is going to do a, a complete 180. If they were, like, a former nerd, they're going to be able to do, like, flips and, like, sprint forever, climb walls. You know, just this hella athletic stuff, right? You know, they're going to be, like, full of swagger and be real confident now. And they're going to be able to deal with, like, their former bullies and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, just get more popular. Everyone's going to be like, man, this, uh, this, this kid that we used to bully and ignore, suddenly they're all of a sudden really cool. And everyone's going to want to, like, get to know them, right? Um, and if someone finds out about their abilities, it literally does not matter. Nope. Either it never comes up again, or there's some sort of time travel or something that goes back to prevent that, that person from finding out, or, like, memory erasing stuff. Or that person just decides not to tell anyone, and then it's, it's like, never brought up again, or that person ends up joining their team. Others do it. It's never like a whole issue where, yeah, I'm exposed and this is my life now. There's always some way out of it, right? Think of the most recent Spider Man's where uh, Peter Parker's ex identity, identity was exposed, right? Uh, but he just like goes and talks to Doctor Strange and essentially goes back and erases everyone's memory of him being Spider Man, right? You know, whatever. No, no real negatives there. <clears throat> but yeah, that's going to happen. Also, just to make it clear, the part of the middle about the personality doing a 180, it's like, very obviously this person changed all of a sudden, right? And in a world of like heroes and superheroes and stuff like that, surely people would be like, you got powers now, bro? Huh? Or at least like start keeping an eye on them because of how much they changed, right? That's what I would think at least. But moving on to love interests. And I put a parenthesis S there because occasionally there can be more than one. And I'll use some examples here. But first of all, the teen hero, for the most part, must have someone to love. Whether it's someone out of their league that they are into, or if it's someone who like secretly loves them but they're oblivious to it, or maybe both at once. Um, something's going to happen. Think like Incredible. Right, the, the show Incredible, where uh, our guy likes this lady, right? And he, he kind of thinks she's out of his league. But once he gets his powers, he's all swaggered and shit, he's real cool, right? And then all of a sudden, you know, they start dating, right? But then also there's this other superhero lady who ends up, you know, liking him as well. And so there's just, you know, multiple love interests there, right? Because, uh, yeah, because somehow getting their powers makes their love interests interested in them, right? Because without their powers, they would have just been a normal loser or something like that, right? Um, so either they get interested because of their powers, because all of a sudden their personality changes, right? Um, or they happen to find out. Like, uh, think of some stuff where, like, the, the person will see them changing into their costume or something, for example. Um, or the other person, the other love interest, has powers, and they bond over it. Think, like I said, uh, Incredible, where uh, I think it's Adam Eve ends up, you know, connecting with Incredible because of their, you know, they share powers and all this kind of stuff, right? 
anyway. And the hero will always get the girl or the guy, right? Or they're going to find someone better, right? So they might not get that person, but they're going to find someone else who accepts them. Uh, it's really going to be that kind of thing. Or what else will happen is you can totally tell if you two characters love each other, right? But the hero is just not going to confess and the other character is not going to do anything to forward it. So they're just going to be like really close friends for a while, right? Like, I think... Um, the original, like way back when they did the Spider-Man movies with, uh, uh, God, I, for, I forget his name now. The ones where he's like really awkward, right? And Mary Jane like is dating this other guy before, right? Kind of like that, you know, where like they, they kind of like each other, but like they're, they're just friends because none of them will like ball up and confess until like later on, right? That kind of stuff. And uh, you can think of this as all kinds of relationships. There's, you know, Robin and Starfire. There's Raven and Beast Boy kind of stuff going on. Um, just, just countless. There's always someone that is like a love interest for the teen stuff. Because it's a teenage drama, right? And kids, what do kids do? They, they love and, and shit like that, right? That's just how it goes. Next up, we got their interactions with normies. And by normies, I mean normal people. So they're going to act more confident than they did before, of course. Um, they'll possibly act smug, the whole, <laughs> they don't know I'm a superhero kind of thing. Um, they'll still treat others properly, is essentially what's going to do. You know, their, their powers aren't going to go to their head for the most part. They might, like, stand up to bullies or something like that. But they're not going to, like, start bullying other kids because they suddenly have power. Right? They're still going to be kind to the powerless and try to be good. For the most part, and there are exceptions, right? but this is how most teen superheroes are written, right? Um, others will start treating them better as well. Uh, you know, it, it's some kind of sixth sense that these other people in the world have. Um, maybe the, the main character, maybe the superhero, they fought against some bullies. They stood up to bullies, and because of that, they are starting to get uh, reclaim, right? Or, or maybe because they're suddenly getting stronger and can like lift more or they're like able to run further and faster. They're suddenly good at sports, so they're able to show off their athletics. And as we all know, sports equals cool after all, at least in the comic book world. And that is just kind of what happens. Um, so my last slide here is, why would you write your character like this? Why would you, if we go through here, conform to all these different things that are, are very clearly, if we look at the heroes, they're all basically the same. They all get their powers in some special way. They were all, you know, some sort of something wrong with them. They were either, you know, traumatized or they were neglected or bullied, all that kind of stuff when they were kids. They're all, you know, altruistic and very nice and all like that. So, so why, why should you, if you're going to make a superhero, make one exactly like that? Because that's just how it is. You know, everyone does it. And you want to be cool, right? You want to be able to make a, a, a teenage superhero that everyone's going to be like, yeah, that's a teenage superhero, all right? Um, also because it panders to fans. Because uh, most fans of superheroes and stuff were nerds back in the day. And back in the day, uh, nerds used to get bullied and stuff, right? You know, pushed into lockers and all this good jazz, right? Even though nowadays it's, it's kind of mellowed out more because video games and comics, stuff like that are, are more mainstream, right? Because now that the you know, former kids have grown up, they've been able to teach their kids, hey, this stuff's cool. And so now kids currently in you know, school don't necessarily care as much, at least for the most part. There could be some kids who still do who are like, Haha, I'm a jock, I'm better than you. But yeah, it, it's a way to get the fan to associate themselves with the hero and be like, wow, if this happened to them, this pathetic kid who had all this bad stuff happen to them, maybe it could happen to me too. And then that's what it is. That's why you never see stories about a normal kid just going through school, happy parents, happy you know, social life. Everything's just good about their life. It's just okay. There's not like anything bad in their life. No people like that ever get superhero powers, right? Like, you're not some normie who just happens to get powers and then all of a sudden, you know, you stay good. 
right? Even though all of these teenage superheroes have reasons that they could become villains with their powers, they all become good, right? And, and that's what happens. And that's just what it is, right? And that's why I wanted to make this because every single time Marvel or DC or any of the like, any company that makes superhero content, anytime they make a teenage superhero, they follow this algorithm where the first episode or the first little bit of the movie or whatever, they have to get bullied or something, or the society has to look down on them, or they have to be like a misunderstood kid, or their parents, you know, are overprotective or don't like them or something. It's, it's like they have to do that every single time. It always happens. I was watching Miss Marvel, the, uh, the new series that's coming out. I watched the first episode and I was like, oh yeah, it's a, another high school kid gets bullied kind of show and then gets powers. And I was like, wait, isn't that all teenage superhero movies and stuff? Like, all the backstories of teenage superheroes are like that, right? Even like all the X-Men kids, like something happens and then they get sent to Xavier's Academy, right? Like either their powers are crazy and like their parents sends them there or um, they accidentally hurt someone and get sent there or they're on the run from something and they get sent there. You know, all this kind of stuff, right? Like, something bad happens, they get powers and they turn it into something good, right? That, that's how teenage superheroes are written. You know? uh, but if we look at like adult superheroes, uh, we could take like the Hulk, for example, you know, a scientist who doesn't really have any huge tragedies in their life um, it's just researching gamma radiation. It's exposed and becomes a superhero. Iron Man, he uh, is a rich playboy who gets kidnapped and then uses his knowledge to make his thing, right? He doesn't have like a whole horrible tragedy backstory kind of thing. Um, we could say Batman, his parents killed, follows this because he began as a child, right? He didn't become a hero later on in his life. Um, Thor, the God of Thunder, he's just a god. It's not like he had a huge, horrible childhood. In fact, you could, I guess you could say Thor had a kind of a good one um, for the most part. Sure, there was some bad stuff, but like he had a mom and a dad and he messed around with Loki and they, you know, played tricks on each other all the time, stuff like that. But he had his powers from birth, all that kind of good stuff. And it's not like they hid his powers from him either, right? So all these adult superheroes we have, they're like, so different because they develop their powers in a different way, right? Um, how they find out about their powers, how they go about using them. There's like a method to it that kids don't have, you know? But all the kids, every single teenage superhero that I can think of for the most part, starts out as a pathetic weakling who gets strong. And that's just how it goes. And so I wanted to make this to kind of poke fun at that and be like, I could write a teenage superhero because all I have to do is follow all these steps that I showed you before. And it'd be quite simple. Um, let, let's go through, let's take Spider-Man, for example, and we'll go through all of my stuff here to uh, show you about it. So, <clears throat> backstory. Their uh, parents are dead, their uncle Ben gets killed, and they're living with their Aunt May, right? Um, he gets bullied, shoved into lockers, looked down on because he's a nerd all that kind of stuff, kind of unpopular, has a couple of close kids, right? He sort of has this one girl he's interested in, but uh, nothing really goes too far with that because he thinks that maybe she's kind of out of his league. Moving on to how they got their powers, of course, the right place, right time, bitten by the spider. Um, and then how do they use their powers? Well, they, they mess around, try to climb stuff, figure stuff out, you know, hurt themselves in the process. Uh, very quickly get the hang of being able to sling themselves around New York City, messing around, making their, you know, webs with their, their necessary knowledge. Um, when it comes to villains, they, you know, get beat up pretty quick. And then they, they learn from that and, you know, use their knowledge and their altruistic stuff to try to be like, I'll, uh, I'll you know, I'll fix them and I'll, I'll be able to beat them up next time and all that stuff. And of course, it's like, you have the, the current ones where like people find out Spider-Man's just a kid and it's like, you're just a kid? You know, 
And of course, he, he tries to keep it secret. If we go with the most uh, recent one, for example, it falls into, oh, he has friends? Well, I'm going to tell him right away. Um, and then you have, you're not going to tell any adults. But then, you know, there's a Iron Man who comes along. And you're like, yeah, I'm a hero, by the way. Uh, all that kind of stuff. Of course, I mean, I think Iron Man already kind of knew that because he figured it out. But regardless. And then you have their personality doing a 180. Uh, Peter Parker, for example, was just a, a normal nerd. But then he is able to, you know, stand up to his bullies because he's stronger and can, you know, coordinate himself better. And, you know, he's just a brighter person because of it, right? And uh, the, literally someone found out the Mysterion thing where uh, Mysterion finds out, tells the world, and then he just goes back in time with Doctor Strange and undoes all that. Yeah. Thing. Love interest, we have, you know, um, Mary Jane or MJ the newest one who thinks is out of his league, but then something happens and they click and they get together, all that kind of stuff. Uh, an interaction with normies, you know, he's still a person of the people, right? You know, he's, he's still, you know, trying to protect New York and his fellow New Yorkers and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, all the people treat him a little bit better because he acts better or something, I don't know. And uh, yeah, that wraps it up. You can put another planet or anything, you know, if we go real quick with, uh, let's go with, uh, who else tried to list? Um, yeah, Ben 10. We'll go with Ben 10, for example. So, um, for the most part, I, I don't remember too much about, but hold on, let's not go with Ben 10, because I don't remember too much about his beginning. Um, I know he gets, like, stuck on a, like, camping trip he didn't want to go to. I guess you could say that's his forced bad one or whatever. Um, Static Shock? I guess we could go with that, right? And it's been a while since I've watched Static Shock. So give me a moment here. So he gets bullied, right? He's also kind of a smart guy, likes comics and stuff like that, you know. Um, I think... I, I actually don't remember how he gets his powers. Um, I believe he just randomly gets them one day, right? Because he's part of that, like, mutant thing with, like, the, the Flash stuff, right? I, I Exactly. Um, how these are powers, well, he tries to, you know, do various things with it, uh, ends up finding out he can fly around on a garbage can, lid, stuff like that. And, you know, he defeats villains and all that kind of stuff, the same way as Spider-Man really does. Um, yeah, and then let's see. I think he has a friend who knows that he's Static Shock and whatnot as well. Uh, but personality is a little bit better. He, you know, is able to stand to his bullies and people, you know, treat him a little bit better. Uh, I believe he also has a love interest. I just forget who her name is because, look, I have not seen Static Shock since I was like maybe 10. So it's been like a decade uh, or more or two since I've seen Static Shock. But I hear they're making a new one, so that's going to be great. Uh, regardless, uh, interacting with normies, you know, he's still just all this, you know, this, this playful, like, Kind of guy, sometimes smug about things because you know he does have powers, of course. Um, but he treats people properly for the most part, and everyone else treats him properly too because his personality, you know, gets better once he has powers, essentially, right? Uh, but yeah, that, that's every single one. Just think of like any teen hero that's like a mainstream popular hero, and you can apply all of this to them, and that's all it is. That is the algorithm, the guide to writing a teenage superhero. Because so all you got to do to make one popular is, uh, I guess, give them a cool power too, right? And come up with cool, cool villains for them to, to fight against. But for the story, all that matters for them and their backstory is the information in this presentation. So do with that what you will. Anyway, everyone, that's been me. Uh, I just wanted to ramble on about this because I thought it was hilarious. So thank you all for listening. And uh, let me know what you all think in the comments. Do you agree that pretty much all the teenage superheroes are like this? Um, do you disagree at certain points? Do you have any examples of teenage superheroes that aren't like this? Did I completely mess up on my uh, any of these heroes here with how they have some sort of tragic backstory or they get bullied or something like that and then they you know, go up there. And let me point out, when I say uh, <clears throat> that are depressing, I don't mean all of these have to happen. I mean, they could just be bullied, for example. Um, 
or they could just be looked down on for certain things, right? Don't have to have all of them. Just let me know what you think, you know, because I think pretty much all of these people that I listed here, and I, I could have thought of some more, all of them have these in common, right? And yeah. Well, that'll be all from me, everyone. Thank you for listening to me ramble on about this, and I'll catch you all next time. Bye for now.